Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with John and Pamela and Mike. Not touching myself. Not touching himself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucky Stars. <laughs> <laughs> Gruesome. That'll be saved for the Robot Sex episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right, because the Robot Sex episode is definitely going to be kosher on YouTube for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mike is definitely an android. <laughs> Hey, let's nobody look for what's be going on behind my head here. Let's not do that. Not today. So, uh, what are you drinking, Mike? Mm. Uh, Stone Ruination. Oh, 2. nice. 2.0. 2.0. Oh, so is, is that your... any good? I haven't tried the 2.0. It's very good. Try some. It's very hoppy. At least that's what I get out of it. Oh, that's... That's that's really good, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like hoppy beers, though. Amazing, um, uh, by local, of course, uh, Stone Brewery in uh, San Diego County. Uh, still locally owned, from what I understand. Am I right about that? Yeah, unlike Ballast Point and Saint Archer yeah. and Lagunitas, like God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, lost, lost to the Borg. They they got sucked up. So anymore, you're gonna need a freaking corporate map to figure out. No, right, right. What flow chart. In Bev is owned by <laughs> working on Sweden. How did Sweden get involved in this? Who was owned by <laughs> Disney? What? <laughs> Viacom and Coca Cola. Owens, MTV, and Nickelodeon? What the fuck's up with that? Mm, General weird. Dynamics? <laughs> <laughs> they make bombs? What's this umbrella company? <laughs> corporation? No A shell company? What the hell is that? Is that oil or not? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's a different episode altogether. Have we really done one on corporatism just in general? I don't think so. All right, so episode of the future, corporatism. Mm -hmm. Done. Good, good idea. <laughs> tonight. Tonight. Despite Jesse not being here. Uh, we miss you, Jesse. But uh, we have a good, have a good, have a good trip. <laughs> on his way. He's not, you know, he's not really mm. focused on the the movement. We've got a chair for him if he shows up. <laughs> he's loitering. <laughs> no, no, he he's just a good kidding. guy. Just Jesse's kidding. a good guy. He he's uh, enjoying the drop top yada right now. Is what's going on? <laughs> I guarantee you. Uh. No, not not really. But <laughs> no. yeah, what, what happened to Miata? Is that like not functioning we, anymore? Or? Well, we'll, no. let, we'll we'll talk about it off screen. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So super secret, Jesse and his tank. Right. Got it. Off screen. <laughs> Understood. So anyway, what the fuck is up with libertarians being all like pro borders and shit lately? Uh, who are we talking about exactly? Uh, well, Lou Rockwell. Stefan Molyneux. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't quite understand that either. I think that um, if... Um, First of all, Stefan Molyneux, he's been kind of going off the deep end for a while now. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the ivory tower is a comfortable place to be. I'm not going to lie. I mean, <laughs> you know, if so in the position to be in an ivory tower, it might be kind of nice, but, you know. <laughs> but... Uh, a lot of elephants. And, and Luke Rockwell, he's Sorry. been kind of... He, he's not my favorite person out there, but for other reasons. His, his censorship, which is his own It's his, his own website. Thing. It's his, so what, fair, his website, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, all right. But still. But, but being pro-borders, that's, that's like a whole nother level, you know? I mean... It seems to me like that's like one of the founding planks. We don't believe in imaginary lines created by states, yeah. you know? The, uh, you know, and, and it's, uh, when, it, when it comes to practicality, it, I mean, it really is a joke. You know, there is, uh, you've got people every day that get past in, in, you know that's around these these border checkpoints. Your your um, your San Ysidro. Your um, what is it in Arizona? Uh, what's the big city on the border there? I'm drawing a blank. Nogales. Nogales. Thank you. Um, you know they have all these 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 big you know fences. You know 
seemingly impenetrable, right? But yet people get past them all the time, every day. To the point where, uh, comically so, and I really appreciated it, was um, to get <laughs> drugs over the border. Um, weed, not so much, because that sort of operation is not really worth it for weed. But, you know, harder stuff, harder stuff, whatever that means. So you're not really getting good quality if it's coming from Mexico anyway these days. With weed, no, not really, no. But you know, uh, so harder stuff. Your 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 coke, your um, your your pills, oxycontin, whatnot. They're they're putting it into little bricks, and they're manufacturing catapults and <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> flies over the border, and you know, like some guy driving in, like you know, the, you know the. The gringo, green coat, that's where that came from, by the way, was Border Patrol wears green coat. So gringo, green coat, that's where that came from. Drive along in his, in his SUV, sees, where the fuck did that go? Well, by the time he finds out where that brick lands, half a mile away, there's already a couple trucks that drove up, caught that shit, and drove off. They're gone. <laughs> so this whole thing of like, oh, we can stop shit at the border, people find a fucking way. <laughs> to the point where... Check this out. I think it was in TJ. They made a fucking ramp, a ramp where a, a you know, a, 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 your general four wheel drive vehicle, be it a, uh, you know, your your Jeep uh, Cherokee or uh, what's the standard model Jeep? What's that called? Um, Wrangler. Wrangler. You know, either one of those. I'm just saying that as a general thing. You know, the four wheel drive vehicle. They made a ramp where you could just. Drive over that fucking thing, land on the other side, and go. And fucking go. <laughs> and it worked. People did it. So this whole thing of like, oh, we can stop people at the borders is logically insane, morally wrong. And then uh, yet another example of how it's logically insane is that guess what's happened more than half a dozen times is where it's, uh, you know, they have a border check more and you have all these cars lined up and they have to go through the th you have to wait for hours to get through the border. Guess what happens? Every now and then, you get about 200, 250 people that just go, fuck it, and they run the border. Guess what happens? Most of them get through. They just book it because there's no way every single Border Patrol agent can arrest all of them, so they just fucking go. <laughs> and, and that's where the tragedy is, is the fact that, like, they're, they're, going, they're going into that thing knowing that a few of them are going to have to get shipped back. And they just run it and hope for the best. I mean, I uh, not mentioning any names, but like a dude I work with, you know, him and his mom ran across. His mom didn't make it. He had to go back at 10 years old, 10, 11 years old, because his mom didn't make it. And he's like, well, I can't leave my mom back there. He had to do it a second time, and they made it the second time around. Like, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's this extent of human tragedy that is just, Amazing. You've got the United States, which is, w without argument, the, the strongest state currency in the entire world. And our direct neighbor to the south has a currency that is, fuck, what is it now? 12, 13 times less valuable than our own. And that isn't going to cause a conflict. That isn't going to cause suffering. You know, it, it, it's a manipulation. It's, it's, it's done that way for a reason. You know, uh, we have to demonize these people to the South. They speak a different language. Their skin is slightly darker than our own. <laughs> you know, be it as it may that they are partly Spanish and, you know, which is partly European, which you translate that down a couple generations, a thousand years, we're all the fucking same. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah, I, uh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That's all I have to say. I'm done. I'm done. Well, this, Everybody, this is what please. blows my yeah. mind is Lou Rockwell's whole argument was like, oh, this violates property rights somehow. And he argues that, well, everything is either owned by individuals or else it's controlled by the government. And if it's controlled by the government, it's not legitimately their property. Correct. But it's not legitimately unowned either. Because they use government, they use tax funds to pay for it. Therefore, taxpayers own that property. And therefore, taxpayers 
are, are the legitimate owners of the property and so you violate property rights by allowing immigrants through that taxpayers don't want there. So the, the state has property rights is his argument? But they don't. But they don't. <laughs> so, but, but it absolutely blows my mind because how can, I, I don't understand how anybody can look at immigration laws. First of all, their status to the core. It's an imaginary line made up by a gang of thugs who steals your money and then harasses people for crossing this imaginary line in the dirt. And, yeah, things would be different in a free society. We don't have a free society. Right. But I can still be said to own property. And if I want to allow another human being to hang out on my property... If I want another human being, if I want to contract with another human being to meet some mutual ends, a.k.a. hire somebody, who the fuck is the government, is Lou Rockwell, for that matter, to tell me who I can and can't associate with? I mean, that seems like, to me, to be the core of voluntarism, the core of libertarianism yeah I uh, I don't get it either but I can kind of see John over here itching at the trigger a little bit yeah, and being, yeah. being very you know no I I, I didn't hear Molyneux's argument and I wonder how it would stand up against his own anarchism in 30 days have y'all seen that video it's, it's, it's ancient but uh uh, and it's been a long time since I've seen it. But uh, does it stand up against his own argument well, for anarchy? You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't hear his argument as to why there should be immigration control, borders control, or anything like this. But Well, Wes addressed this to him, right? Yes, he did. Um, and he essentially took... Molyneux from like five years ago mm -hmm. and pitted him against Molyneux of today. <laughs> right. Molyneux versus Molyneux. <laughs> five year difference. Yeah, and that's to, to say we should all be growing and, and not be in, a, in caught yeah, in, of in, in a static condition. Not arguing what Molyneux's changes were. I'm simply saying that, yeah. I'd be, I'd be embarrassed to quote myself from six years ago for right. sure. Yeah, but moving I mean, forward no. and not moving backward, Molyneux mm -hmm. seems to be backstepping. Concur. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, but, yeah, and then the Syrian situation with the refugees and all that, there's a lot I've seen on this as well, and I'm surprised the attitude I'm seeing from, you know, confessed libertarian, mm -hmm. anarchist, um, voluntarist on this subject. Other than Chris Cantwell. Okay, all right. I, I don't even listen to him. Yeah, so fair I don't enough. even know I mean, what he I says. Do, so. I, I, I listen to the dude every now and then, and it's kind of the same nonsense. So, yeah. So. But so my... I... Here's, here's what I think about the situation. It's wrong to use stolen money to relocate people to provide for them and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I also, the government is also forbidding people to um, sponsor, for lack of a better term, these, these refugees. So you can't... Don't be too surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there is a push to, to, have, to have that happen. Because there's a lot of people who would want to support these people. Because it is uh, just an absolute mess. Basically a proxy war between us and Russia right now in Syria. Yeah. Uh, with us fighting us and, and, and Russia. 
Well, yes, 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 yes. well um, <laughs> Americans hate Assad. They also hate ISIS, and they're fighting each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so we're we're uh, not we're American America. American thugs are supplying both ISIS, but also fighting ISIS in Syria. So is and then so is Russia Assad. is also fight, and so is Assad. Right. But we don't like we don't like Assad, so we're fighting them too. And we don't. But Russia that, does does like Assad and is fighting their enemies, which is ISIS. Well, and yeah, apparently because, McCain or uh, Lindsey Graham is just irate that it's the Russians kicking ISIS yeah, ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, but well, this, but I mean the whole the whole region's a mess, and you have four thousand or four million displaced refugees mm-hmm. who are seeking asylum in various places and not getting a very warm reception. Take the those who claim to be Christian to task, and they say, you know, don't let the, don't don't care for your fellow man, reject their uh, pleas for for. Uh, refugee status or whatever right right uh you know uh, speaking of isis uh try not to get off topic but it's really you know current events and point to the time we're in uh pictures being worth a uh pictures being worth a thousand words uh there's a picture of John McCain in the same room as the guy... The leader of ISIS. Yeah. Leader yeah. of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. And at the time, any article related to that was he was negotiation, negotiating an arms deal with the rebel group against Assad. Mm-hmm. That same group, however you may want to describe it, became what is now considered ISIS. Yeah, I think there's a picture out there with Zbigniew Nuzhabrinsky and... Uh, and uh, bin Laden, yeah, bin yeah, Laden, yeah, too, right? that's yeah. that exists also. Yeah, Zbigniew the current, what it, uh, I think his title is uh, not national security advisor, but geopolitical something advisor to the president, whatever. Oh, he has a title still, huh? Well, he's, uh, yeah, unless he's jumped ship for one of the the uh candidates running now, I don't know. <laughs> is, is he doing the Dick Cheney like baboon heart thing? Like, is, yeah. he's pretty old, isn't he? Like, he's got to be in his early 90s, yeah. he has to be. Yeah, he's old as shit. Even his daughter, Mika, she's she's getting vintage. Well, so, but I don't see a lot of people attacking the idea of government intervention in Syrian refugees, but I see a lot of them attacking the Syrian refugees, like, they might be terrorists. Like, really? You're a libertarian and you're saying that you're scared of the terrorists in... Yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, wait, I mean, let, let, oh. let's think about this for a second. Peace out. See ya. Oh. Airport bound. <laughs> John's got some obligations that we can't talk about <laughs> on the air. Well, we could, but let's not just for funsies. Christy? Mm? <laughs> oh, Christy, Christy's no, not. Come Chris, on down. Christy's camera awesome shot. Yeah. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. Join the show. Yeah. No, but but I see all this stuff like like this meme I saw not uh, earlier today it said you have ten thousand M and M's and ten of them are poisoned. Are you gonna grab a handful? Like, well, first of all, that's not even an accurate representation. A more accurate representation is you have four million. And you are being forced to eat 10,000 of them. Mm-hmm. But they're going to be tested for poison. Mm-hmm. 4,000 of the 4 million might be poison. But they will be tested before they're brought in. Mm-hmm. And... So, and... Uh, Where are you going? I forget. <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Well, I have M&M's in my head and I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I, ch- chocolate's yeah. delicious and, you know... My point is, is that... There's nothing we can do with about them coming in. What we can do is be humans and try to help them when they get here. It's just further oppression. The, the wars are created and then the people suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Needlessly. Um, the 
I guess to, to show my colors and express in a part why there's no there's no hope for me is <laughs> um, uh, to use the, uh, an analogy from uh, uh, Roman history was uh, so you know the 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 st the the narrative now is fear the immigrants, the people who are coming into, we don't know them, we don't know who they are, fear them. Um, so Caesar, when he was conquering Gaul, uh, there was a, I think it was the Veneti, V-E-N-T-I-I-I, -I -I. don't quote me on that, I'm probably wrong, but I'm close. Um, they Veneti. VNTI or whatever. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> there was a tribe that uh, was going through what was considered Roman Gaul, which was kind of like a very gray area. It was like, we consider this to be part of our thing. And so they were migrating through that area to get to the coast of what is now like the lower part of France. They were going to yeah. live there. And... Uh, Caesar said, well, they are a threat to uh, national Rome. National security. Yeah, the, uh, that, yeah. I mean, they didn't, he didn't say national security, but he said they're a threat to Rome. And this is Roman territory. They can't come through here. And, and this was not without this tribe sending communication to Caesar's legion saying, hey, we just need to get from point A to point B. We're just going through here. We don't want to harm anything. We're just going from one point to another. And he was like, oh, okay. And he sends a letter to the Senate. Oh, well, they're still invading our territory. What should we do? He didn't get a response from the Senate. So, so Caesar said, let's attack them. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's stop them because they're um, a threat to the Roman state. And, they're, and they're, there's a work, the, the Caesar's campaigns in Gaul, which is... I mean, all based on Caesar's narrative. So how truthful is that? Where he's saying that, you know, they're, they do all sorts of horrible, you know, barbaric traditions of doing this and putting people in wicker, wicker baskets. And there's no evidence of that ever other than what he said. And we stop them. And so that was his rationale. And that's what he sent to the Senate was, we stopped these horrible barbaric people from coming <laughs> from one place to another. Well, you want to know what happened? So he had a couple battles and attacked the people who could defend the tribe, the, however you want to say it, the stronger people in the tribe, be it male or female, and most likely most of the male, but some of the female too, if you know they were more, more equipped to, to do that sort of a thing. And, uh, and killed them all. And the people who survived were sold into slavery. So Caesar made out like a gangbuster, and not only that, made himself out to be the hero of saving Roman territory. <laughs> so, I mean, the sad thing is, is that this has been going on for thousands of years, this sort of narrative of we have to stop those people who have a different culture and different language than we do. We have to stop them where they're at, because if they come here, they're going to somehow poison the culture. That's what I was thinking. Is so if we're going to discuss immigration and we're trying to get an idea through, let's focus on the issues that so-called statists would have with immigration. Like they're going to come in and take our jobs. How are we going to feed them? It's going to take resources from Americans. How would you answer that? But it's not going to. I mean, we all know that it's not going yeah. to. But that those are the real issues. That's 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 really what concerns people about having open borders so so I think I, I think uh, what's his name hmm. um, sounds like <laughs> looks like Canadian. Stan, oh Hope. Stan Hope yes oh, okay. I think he has a really excellent thing on that it's like he says uh He's from Bisbee, Arizona, which is right on the border. And he says, I, I, every day I see these guys coming over the hills. And, okay, so they don't speak the language. Don't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I, uh, and I see these guys coming over. And you have, you, they have all these, you know, there's, there's the cliched argument that they don't speak the language. They won't assimilate, uh, and all all those arguments go against the 
primary argument, which is they're taking American jobs. And he says, I see these guys coming over the hills. You're right. They don't speak the language. Mm. They, they don't have shoes half the time. They come over, you know, all dehydrated from wandering the desert trying to get in. Now I remember it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's just standing there. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's like, and if that guy is as qualified for your job as you are, <laughs> you are a loser <laughs> of epic proportions. <laughs> it wasn't very kind, but... If he can take your job yeah. via pantomime, do this. <laughs> boink, boink. Yeah. Boink, boink. Ah, see, see. Boink, 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 boink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then you obviously, like, your job yeah, isn't, yeah, like, chuckle-head. incredibly that complicated, you know? I mean, it, it's... Uh, uh, I haven't seen it personally, and I worked in what may as well be considered construction for five and a half years, and I never saw somebody who didn't have any sort of paperwork or whatever who was just like, uh, uh, swing hammer, boink, 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 and came in and took somebody else's job, and it didn't happen. You know, it just didn't happen. It's not real. No, I mean, I think I think the real, I, I think the biggest issues are how these immigrants are being treated when they get here. Mm. Where I lived, I lived in a rural area in my teens, mm-hmm. and my dad worked at a co-op, mm-hmm. and he would see these farmers coming in all the time talking about, oh, I'll get my Mexican to do it, mm-hmm. and. Um, and not all of them were like this, but the he he's told me about one guy who who had like this family living in his shed, mm-hmm. um, doing work on his property, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's basically the new slavery the way they treat some of these people, mm-hmm. and it's disgusting. Uh, a a neo feudalism, if you will. That's yeah. the way I see it. it it's, it's it's generally along those terms. Yeah, but it means cheap produce. You know. Yeah. Um, I, and but you could with if you got rid of the this false idea of this imaginary line. Oh, you were born in a different place from me. Therefore, you're a different type of person. Mm-hmm. You're not worth as much because you weren't born on this side of this imaginary line. Uh, it it creates this class system of people who, you know, underclass who can be treated differently from other people and it and it should be mentioned that how much the the state is an influence in that i mean absolutely okay, so, yeah that's yeah i mean I, mean, you, yeah, I, I understand like that's that's been the general thread of what we're talking about but to emphasize over the george orwell special that flies over every time we do the show <laughs> you know um, how is it that here say that not we obviously the, the, the people here but the nation whatever that is as a whole can say that these people are doing certain things that are influencing us negatively when um, everything that that is done as they, as we say, is like, oh well, you know, they're doing menial jobs that are horrible and terrible, and nobody really wants to do them. I did them in high school. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's you know, that that's stuff that okay, so nobody wants to do that, right? But they're doing it, and then people say like, oh, well, that's terrible. They're they're taking people's jobs. It's like, well, I'm just letting you know. Dude who works a job who's getting paid like eighty thousand, ninety thousand dollars a year doesn't want to mow his lawn and he wants to pay for like five dollar six dollar drink at starbucks but he doesn't want to fucking mow his lawn he's paying somebody else to do it and it may not be the best price but he's paying somebody to do it and the whole idea of of, of what's a fair price and what isn't is a completely different episode but it brings to mind um so do you remember the animatrix did you ever see that mm. Maybe a long time ago. Rewatch it. So, um, <laughs> so what if uh, you have um, sentient machines that want to come to a certain location? Okay, 
and they they may provide to for their upkeep provide certain services uh, to 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 keep themselves going keep themselves recharged <laughs> you, can, you can use that analogy I'm sorry that was a, there was a horrible canned laughter but um you know if, if we could do that if they would do that sort of thing would that be kosher would that be acceptable to most people that you would have certain you know I don't know th- but it looks like we're out of time damn it we always <laughs> run out of time right when we get to the good shit we will get to the good shit one day so. <laughs> one day one day we'll get to it have a good one Take care. See you next week.